I ask you to remain standing for the reading of the gospel. It's in Matthew, the 20th chapter, reading from verse 20 to 28. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked a favor of him. And he said to her, What do you want? And she said to him, Declare that the two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand and one on your left hand, in, the, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink of the cup that I am about to drink? And they said to him, We are. And he said to them, You will indeed drink my cup, but to sit on the right hand or the left, this is not mine to grant but it is for those with whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard it, they were angry with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know the rulers of this Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you, but whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. We continue our series on the word of the cross. You add the word cross to any other word, and it adds power and strength. Remembering how Paul said in 1 Corinthians, the word of God is foolish to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are being saved, it's the power of God. Tonight we come to cross purposes. We want what we want all the time, on purpose. It's what we want. But God has a different plan, and he wants us to love others over self, to be of service, to sacrifice, uh, to give ourselves in love of our enemy and forgiveness. And all those things go against our personal purpose, and that's why God is at cross purposes with us. Our purpose is set up to be biased. That is, when I think about it, I want it to do what I want to do, so I look good to other people. I love the story. You notice that James and John didn't come to Jesus to ask to sit on the right hand or the left. The father didn't come and ask that either. Zebedee didn't. But the wife... The mother, I think they put her up to it, came and asked Jesus for a favor. Let my boys be real important. Let one of them sit on the right and one of them sit on your left and let everybody know how wonderful those boys are. I know you've seen the picture that Michelangelo painted of the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper. Everybody's on the same side of the table. That's not how people do it in real life. They sit around the table, even on that day when Jesus met in the upper room. And the truth is, somebody did get to sit on the right and the left. There is a lot of speculation that when... Je Jesus asked Judas, what you're going to do, go and do quickly. He was sitting next to him because most of them didn't hear what Jesus said. Let my boys have special favor. Let me ask you a question. Do you know what 2020 is? Well, if you're an optometrist, 2020 is perfect vision. You can see clearly everything around you. If you were watching television, 2020 often portrays how people don't do right and evil things they do, and it exposes them like 60 Minutes or hard copy because people are always out for their own personal purpose. 
But to the Christian, maybe it's John 20, 20. When we remember that she asked special favor and we often go to God in prayer to ask special favor for us. Miss Zebedee was not above asking Jesus. And I think sometimes we are not either. One of the sayings we have in America is that justice is blind. If you've ever seen a picture of justice before the Supreme Court or any other basic court, it always has a blindfold on. It reminds us that justice is not 2020. It's blind. It does not pick or be biased or should not pick and be biased to any one group or person. It ought to reflect being equal justice and righteousness for all people. Jesus came to defeat the power of sin and death and to give us a new direction in life. And that puts us at cross purposes. Jesus said two things that I want to remind you of tonight. Purpose of the cross or the cross purpose. First of all, he said the way to greatness is not with special favor, but it's with service. If you want to be the best, then you need to be the least and put yourself last. Now, I can remember many a time at a potluck dinner when the one who was last didn't get near as much as the ones that went first. And back in my day, and of course that's an old, old day, the parents and adults went first and the children went last. Nowadays, the children go first and the adults go last. If you want to be first in the kingdom of heaven, you must be last. You must put aside your own selfish pride in order to see clearly. One day a young woman came to the preacher and she said, Pastor, I need to confess my sin. And the pastor said, all right, come on in here in my office. And he said, now tell me what your sin is. And she said, my sin is the sin of pride. She said, when I get up in the morning and look in the mirror, I say, isn't that the most beautiful woman you ever saw? I am the prettiest one around. And the pastor said, that's not a sin. That's just a mistake. We all make mistakes, especially when we try to elevate ourselves higher than we really ought to be. Jesus asked the boys, can you drink of the cup that I'm going to drink? And of course they said yes, but they didn't really know how difficult that cup would be for them to do that. What's a four-letter word that causes us to cry and weep and mourn? It's pain. Pain is not something we want, but it is something that comes. Or as they say in football, no pain, no gain. Before the reward comes, there must be some sacrifice. My father used to be, he was a Methodist pastor for 30 years, and he, one of his favorite sayings was, if you live long enough, something will happen. At the time, when I was young, I didn't understand what that meant. But as I've aged, I began to realize that suffering is difficult, and it's part of what we do. Pain is part of life. My father was right. We don't get out of this world alive. Jesus said that we ought to remember that his purpose is through service. And the second thing he said is service is also part of suffering. We're at cross purposes because we don't want to suffer. We don't want pain. We want to get out of every bit of that that we can. And yet, it happens. The cross is there to remind us that pain and suffering and death do not have the last word. But Jesus came to show us the way, to lead us, and to guide us in what we're doing. 
sometimes life deals us a bitter pill. I'm reminded of the story of the man who went to see his doctor, and the doctor said, "How? I'm not doing well at all. And the doctor said to him, well, I want you to take one of these pills with every meal. And at bedtime, I want you to take an ounce of whiskey. Two weeks later, he came back into the doctor, and the doctor said, how are you doing? He said, I'm not doing very well, doc. He said, well, did you do what I told you to do? And he said, well, I'm way behind on the pills, but I'm six months ahead on the whiskey. <laughs> we want what we want rather than what the doctor orders or what God wants for us. Jesus' way is a way that suffers. Sometimes we suffer for other people. Jesus calls us to do that, to suffer in order that we might do what is right. Tonight we share the Lord's Supper, communion, and we remember that Jesus said from the upper room that night, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat it and remember me. And after supper he took the cup and he said, this is my blood poured out for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus is calling us to a better way, but also to remember who led the way. Jesus went ahead in every way to show us how we ought to live. During the Second World War, a GI was cut off from the rest of the group, and some mortar shells were all around him and the ground vibrated and at one point it vibrated so hard that it tumbled him into a foxhole. When he could straighten himself up, he felt something pinching his back. He turned around and he looked, he began to dig in the dirt and he discovered a cross, a beautiful cross in the foxhole. About that time, the, the earth shook again and in tumbled another person. And when that person straightened up, he noticed that he was a chaplain. And the man lifted the cross and he said, Quick, chaplain, show me how this thing works. We're looking for a way that if the cross could work, it would help us not have to face up to what we have to face. There isn't magic in the cross. And the Protestant cross is empty to remind us that Jesus isn't there that it is empty because God raised him from the dead. He's gone before us, and he promised to come and get us again. He leads the way. I close with a little story. There was a young priest who was driving home late at night. He had been in a beating, and uh, it had been long, and it had been difficult, and it had been busy. And as he drove along on the road, he began to notice that it was nearly midnight and he hadn't done his evening prayers. So he pulled off the shoulder and parked, or parked his car, got out, walked around in the front where the light was shining on the headlight, knelt down, opened his prayer book, and began to pray. A trucker came by and saw him, pulled over, and said, Are you having car trouble, buddy? Oh, no, he said, I'm doing fine. And he went back to praying through the prayer book. As the truck driver drove away, he said, that must be the best book ever written. Beloved, the story of Jesus' love and sacrifice on the cross is the best story ever told. It hasn't special privilege for us, there's just enough light for us to see. Just a Savior kneeling beside us to show us the way. And just enough love to live by. We're at cross purposes. God is calling us to his purpose over ours. I'm not sending my mama to argue my case. 
because I am not to sit on the right or the left, but to be a servant of all. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all of life, you who have led us on the way, you who have shown us what the purpose of our lives is to be about, help us to follow in your footsteps, to do that which you do, to become that which you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen.